it's starting your day. <laughs> you know, I get a kick out of this little one, this little devotional that we included in the devotionals. It's always been my wife's particular favorite, and in some little way and some personal touch, you know, it's always neat because isn't it wonderful when you can share your life with someone that you have the opportunity to go through the experiences of godliness, sometimes failing, sometimes succeeding, but sharing with another person those things that give you a little kick in the head, a little enjoyment, a little tweak every now and then that says, huh. and it gives you just that warm inner glow of that person that you know. I pray that you have someone that you can share your life's experiences with. And if you're not married, you can do the same because you have fellowship with the brethren. Because if you are doing as God commanded, which is saying, forsake not the assembling together the brethren, then you have that chance to be transparent with someone. You can meet with and share with the brethren or the sisterin. <laughs> And you can be just as transparent as God allows you to be within the context of the boundaries that you set for yourselves in fellowship. I know for me, one of the things I always learned in the Jesus movement was that we were very transparent with each other all the time. You know, if we were in sin, we said, yep, you know, don't get too close to me, bro. I'm in sin and I'm struggling, you know, pray for me, you know, and yada, yada. And the humorous part was that <laughs> we would. <laughs> I mean, it was that easy. Nowadays, uh, I'll admit, it gets a little more complicated, you know, and people have their boundaries that they set and they have their little idiosyncrasies of being careful about certain things, so it would be wise to always, whatever fellowship, church, denomination, religion, well, not religion, I hope you're a Christian, if not, you need to get saved, no, <laughs> but whatever boundaries are set within the structure that you find yourself in, then obey those because that's what God has given them there for you. So that you could still be able to share with someone, just like a husband and wife does, intimacy and reality of who you are. Because none of us are perfect. And when you can let your hair down and just be you, you'll find God can take you a lot farther than if you try to put on spiritual errors and one day find yourself falling flat on your face. God forbid that that happens to you, but God, I hope it does, because there's nothing so wonderful as discovering that there's one good way to grow a big nose. <laughs> and that's falling flat on your face regularly. Uh, don't even go there. Yes, that's how I got mine. <laughs> Maybe. Don't be afraid to stop. Oops, wrong one. Wait for peace. That makes more sense. A man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and make them sure. Proverbs 16.9 You may have to step out to find the right thing to do. If you don't hear clearly from God, just step in the direction you think you should go and then wait for peace. If you lose your peace, back out of wherever you were headed. <laughs> Dave and I almost bought two different buildings to house our ministry. We were in negotiations until one morning, after praying, Dave said, Joyce, I don't have a piece about buying that building. I feel like God is saying, if you buy that building, you're going to be sorry later. So we waited for peace. And now we have a building that is completely paid for with room to grow. Pray until you find peace. You know, that is one of the indications, emotionally, that God uses to creating us a confirmation or a indication of something that he is trying to say to us. Obviously, it is not the best communication that God could offer to you. Direct intervention by God, of course, is the best. And that would be where God just took his hand and slapped you around and said, stop. <laughs> And some people use circumstances that way, but no, I'm talking about physically God actually stopping you because like Jacob, he wrestled with an angel. God could intervene. He could. There's nothing stopping him from doing that. 
The second best is to hear God speak, because Jesus said, my sheep hear me and they know me and they would not follow the voice of another. So direct intervention, hearing God speak, and after that, then sometimes what we call having no peace or having peace or feeling a, a discerning inside of a, what we call a spiritual gift that is being able to discern between whether you are comfortable inside internally with something that you think you should do or you're heading or whether you feel as though you're going against the tide and somehow you feel something that's not quite right. Well, that indicative process is what we call the peace. The peace of God shall pass, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall rule your thoughts and minds in Christ Jesus. Meaning that if we are in constant relationship with God and that we continually seek his face to do his will and to obey him, then there is a peace that comes that no matter what the circumstances are, it doesn't faze us, it doesn't bother us. We have this unbelievable ability to have the peace of God which is something beyond the peace of man and a peace of your mind. Because <laughs> anybody could give you a peace of their mind, but that's not the kind of peace we're looking for. So, if you do have, like a woman's intuition, where you feel uncomfortable, the one thing that Israeli defense minister or defense trainers teach every world leader is that if you trust your instincts, we could say your peace then you probably will not put yourself in jeopardy and you will not find yourself in the situation where you're required to defend yourself. Because you may have, in some way, some kind of indication that you shouldn't be doing something. And it's interesting that they teach that because that's what we would call the peace of God. And so, when God is trying to impress upon you that something's not right, he'll take away that peace, if you have it. When he's trying to impress upon you something is right, he'll give you that peace. But you know, you can go beyond that. <laughs> and that's my prayer as you read devotionals, as you listen to them, as you seek to know that you have heard his voice, that as he promised, he would speak to you. But there are times where he'll use circumstance, and there are times where he'll use your Bible study, there are times he'll use your brethren, times he uses a pastor, there are times where he'll use the police officers or some untenable situation that you don't like, that he's going to use it to teach you what is right. So in all these things, we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we don't lean into our own understanding. But in all our ways, we acknowledge him, and then he directs our path according to the wisdom that he chooses in the best way to get through to us. I know for me... <laughs> He's used everything from a two by four to a bird, to a phone call, to a song, to a miraculous intervention, to friends, neighbors, relatives, even the internet. <laughs> but in all of these things, if we give thanks for what he does use, then he will increase our ability to know when he is speaking to us. And so I pray for you this day that as much as I try to hear and see and understand what he's telling me, that you find it even clearer each day that you're alive as you share these evotionals and devotionals, but also as you seek on your own to hear God speak, because he will. If you desire to know the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and strength and pursue it with all of those abilities, you will hear God speak. I have no doubt about that. God promised.